In the previous lecture, we studied some basic concepts in non-cooperative game. In this video, we introduce another approach to game, which is so-called cooperative game theory. So we will discuss some basic properties in allocation problems, feasibility, efficiency, and individual rationality. Let's start with the prisoner's dilemma situation again. This game consists of two players, player one and player two, and each player has two actions, D4 defect and C4 cooperate. In this pair of matrix, the combinations of their actions, DD, DC, and CD and CC, yield four different feasible outcomes. And each player has preference over the outcomes, which is represented by numbers, so-called payoffs. This payoff matrix specifies their actions. Now, let's focus on each player's payoff level in this plane. The horizontal axis is for player 1's payoff or her utility U1 and this vertical one is for player 2's payoff or his payoff, his utility U2. We have uh, four different outcomes. So for instance, they play D and D, then both get negative 1 both get player 1 gets negative 1 and player, player 2 gets negative 1. So this point represents this outcome. If a player 1 plays D and player 2 plays C, then 1 gets 2, 1 gets 2, and 2 gets minus 2. So this point is corresponding to this outcome. Similarly, we can find the point that captures the payoff level of this outcome here. And this point represents this outcome. All right. So we have four different outcomes and we can find four corresponding points in this plane. As we discussed in previous lecture, there is a unique equilibrium in which both player play D. And this point, minus 1 and minus 1, is the corresponding outcome. That means if they are rational, then we can expect they would play D and D and they end up being with this point. So this is so-called a positive analysis of a game which concerns what will happen or what players will do. Now, we may ask a little bit different question instead of what will happen. We may be interested in which outcome would be desirable among those four outcomes. This is another aspect of game theory, so-called normative analysis. Many of you may think this CC, in which both players get 1, might be better than this equilibrium point. But why CC is better? We need to be a little bit formal. So we are going to introduce some properties in a location problem, for instance, in efficiency and individual rationality. Our first criteria for a desirable outcome is efficiency or Pareto efficiency. A feasible outcome is said to be Pareto efficient if there is no other feasible outcome which makes at least one person strictly better off and it's one person happier and 
no one will serve. In the prisoner's dilemma situation, we have three efficient outcomes. But this equilibrium point is not efficient because by switching to this point, actually both players can be better off. So there is another alternative outcome in which at least one player is better off without harming the other. But let's think about this point. For player one to be better off, the only possibility is to moving this point, but it requires player two to be worse off. Similarly, player two can be better off by moving to this point, but player one should be worse off. If there is a such outcome, it must be in this northeast area, but there is no feasible outcome in this area. So, this outcome is efficient. Similarly, we can check this outcome is efficient because there is no feasible outcome in this northeast area. Similarly here, this is efficient because there is no outcome here. But as I mentioned, this outcome is not efficient because we can find an alternative outcome here in the nurses' area. Among the three efficient outcomes, are they all desirable or plausible? To answer this question, we need to introduce another property. Sometimes you may concern the worst case scenarios. A security strategy is the one that maximizes your payoff in worst case scenario and that guarantees the security payoff level no matter what happens. For instance, in the prisoner's dream situation, when you play D, then it gives you either minus one or two but if in the worst case it gives you minus one if we play c then it could give you minus two and one but in worst case scenario you will get minus two so if you concerns the worst case scenario then your strategy d will give you minus one and your strategy c will give you minus two so if you concern this worst case scenario, then you may want to choose D to maximize the payoff in the worst case scenario. So your security strategy is D and that guarantees you a payoff level minus one, no matter what your opponent plays. So, you should guarantee at least minus one. And similarly, player two will be guaranteed at least minus one by playing D. Based on the idea of uh, security payoff level, now we can define individual rationality. Individual rationality requires an outcome should be no worse than their security payoff level. So an outcome is individual rational, then it must be in this area. So here we have two individual relational outcome, which is DD and CC. And these two outcomes are not individual relational because uh, this outcome, player 2, is not going to accept. And this point, player 1, is not going to accept. So we can say efficiency and individual rationality are 
desirable outcomes, desirable properties. So in that sense, this CC is the only outcome that satisfies both efficiency and individual rationality. So far, we considered four feasible outcomes which can be obtained by their pure strategies. Now let's allow mixed strategies. For instance, player 1 plays C and player 2 plays a mixed strategy between C and D with equal probability half and F. Then this will happen with probability half and this will happen with the probability half. So their expected payoff will be this point. So if we consider all the possible combinations of mixed strategies, then the set of feasible outcomes will be the convex whole of the four pure outcomes. So this all this area is going to be the set of uh, feasible outcomes with mixed strategies. Which outcomes are now efficient when we allow mixed strategy? For instance, this point is not efficient because we can find uh, some other feasible outcomes in this northeast area. What about this? This point is efficient because there is no other point in this northeast area. Similarly, this point, this point, and this point, all the points in these lines are efficient. So we call this efficient line efficient frontier. As before, we can say efficient and individually rational outcomes are desirable. In equilibrium, they will choose D and D, but they can obtain some other desirable outcomes by, for instance, a contract. If a player 1 has more bargaining power, then they may uh, end up with those outcomes. And if player two has more bargaining power, then they may end up with those points. If they have uh, the same bargaining power, then they may agree on this point. Now, let's suppose that their payoffs are measured in money and they can transfer their payoff through money. If they can transfer their utility or payoff, then they can obtain some new outcomes. For instance, they can obtain this point. They can contract, say, play C and C, let's play C and C, and they can generate two, one plus one, two. They jointly produce this surplus and redistribute this joint surplus in any, any arbitrary way. So for instance here, player 1 gets 1 and half and player 2 gets half. Or they can split the joint surplus 2 here or here any point in this line. So they can generate jointly 2 and redistribute in any way. If they can transfer their payoff, then actually any point below this line, 45, negative 45 degree line, in which the sum of payoff is uh, 2, is feasible. Of course, any outcome in here is also feasible if they can simply throw the money or the utility away. An outcome is efficient if no one can be better off without harming the others. But when we allow transfer utility, an efficient outcome maximizes just their sum of the 
players pay off. Again, efficient and individual rational outcomes are desirable, and they can be obtained by a contract with a side payment. Again, efficient and individual rational outcomes are desirable, and they can be obtained by a contract if they can transfer their payoff with side payment. So this is a quiz. Again, please submit your answer to our Microsoft Teams.